They call emergency now. I want to see emergency. Oh, you need emergency. Mama, I'm sorry. 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 Mama, It's the AEMT Lecture Series. Welcome back. My name's Mike Morris. Um, so this is going to be Chapter 6. Uh, we're going to cover the last uh, chapter before we have our first exam. Chapter number 5 is Medical Terminology. That will not have a video lecture. However, however <laughs> it will have some worksheets and and so uh, that sort of thing there's not a whole lot of lecturing that, that can really be done in that um in that section all right so hope everybody is staying safe out there and minimizing your contact at least as much as possible Uh, chapter six is about lifting techniques. We will cover what's important. Considering this is stuff you guys have had plenty of in EMT school. All right, so when it comes to proper lifting techniques, um, the first rule of safe lifting is to keep your back in a straight in vertical position okay that's that's what's extremely important when we talk about uh the proper hold uh when we're talking about the power grip at the proper technique is to lift with your palms up When we're talking about you know, back up there we go directions and commands um, we still have to provide those uh, commands uh, to our partners um, so you're approaching a patient um, and it's a car accident and they're uh, maybe you have an abrasion to the forehead or something like that. Don't forget to direct your partner to apply that manual inline support of the patient's head. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, we're talking about, again, um, when you're pulling a patient who's on the ground, you may need to kneel to minimize the distance uh, that you will have to lean over. So when you're doing these body drags, that sort of thing, you know, you want to keep people at that arm length apart. You know, that arm length. If you're more than an arm length, you need to readjust. All right, so through this great weight and distribution uh, plan that we have, um, be aware of two things. One is that the acceptable weight range, all right, uh, for two people is a ride around 220 pounds. If they're more than 250, you need to do it, uh, not even think about it uh, with fewer than four people when we're talking about carrying somebody on a backboard uh, down some stairs um, you gotta always keep that head end elevated always 
or they'll slide off the backboard. Emergency moves uh, sometimes uh, if you need to do an emergency move that should be done before I say again before the primary assessment and treatment begins uh, because it's an emergency move something in that area is, is life threatening to the patient as well as you and that emergency move can be done with a blanket or a closed drag. All right, non-urgent moves. Uh, this could be somebody who uh, has, you know, minimal complaints. Uh, they're more than likely going to be a conscious patient with something like abdominal pain or something like that. Uh, a non-urgent move, a transferring a patient from a bed to the ambulance stretcher, right? That's a non-urgent move. All right, bariatric stretchers and how we compare those with our our EMS stretchers, right? Because there is there is a difference in these stretcher types. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you know uh, will not make sure of, but the differences between a stretcher and a bariatric stretcher is that bariatric stretcher has an increase in stability because it has a wider wheelbase. The wheelbase will be wider. All right. All right, so we're talking about portable folding stretchers. Um, like, uh, I'm not, not in our system, but, you know, this is a, <coughs> excuse me, a national curriculum. And so when there is um, a second patient that must be transported on the squad bench, that's what these are for on a national standard, not a Georgia standard. For sure. All right. So the scoop stretcher, I think all should be familiar with this. Just a reminder that it will not provide adequate immobilization for someone with a spinal column injury. They're good for your broke hips and that sort of thing, but not for you know, a spinal column that has... Um, some type of embarrassment to that spinal column. All right, neonate isolates. Um, what do they do? They keep the patient warm and they protect from excessive handling. They should lock right into your ambulance. Um, the thing that holds the stretcher, the bar, the bracket, um, these are designed on a transport one to, to fit right into those. And to minimize your risk of injury, always keep the patient, always keep whatever weight it is as close to your body 
as possible. So yeah, it was a dry chapter, but those all were just reminders, refreshers. Certainly, it's you've seen that information before. And so, yeah, we'll get started with the real fun stuff here coming up next chapter. And I will look forward to seeing you then.